You want to become a solo skydiver here in Canada? Well, let's talk about another skydiving course you can take to become a solo skydiver. Hey, it's Catherine Bernie from Skydive Vibes and I'm partnering up with the Canadian Sport Parachuting Association to bring you this video series about how to become a skydiver in Canada. Before we start, any links or resources I'm going to talk about in this video will be in the description below, so feel free to visit them at any time. So in this video, we'll talk about the gradual free fall program. Over the last videos, we did talk about the first jump course options that you have in Canada to experience the sky. And we also went over how to become a solo skydiver through the Progressive Free Fall Program or PFF. This is one of the most common way to become a skydiver in Canada, but there's another progression type that you can do here in Canada to become a solo skydiver and it's the Gradual Free Fall Program or GFF. If you want to watch the previous videos we made about the first jump courses and the PFF program, you can simply watch them by clicking right here. Note that those programs may vary from drop zones to drop zones, but they are designed to develop the right skills and experiences to become a fully pledged skydiver. All the courses or programs are following the skills grid that is a reference to develop the skills needed for every skydivers here in Canada. You'll find a link to this grid in the description below and note that it will always be your reference point for all of your progression. So the main difference between the PFF program and the GFF program is that it's meant to give you a gradual progression to free fall skydiving. From jump to jump, you will progressively jump from higher and higher in altitude, giving you more and more free fall time to develop your skills. So the progression consists in two pre three stages and six stages where you will learn the free fall and canopy skills to become a solo skydiver all guided with a certified instructor from the CSP. Each stages may need one or two jumps depending on the skills of the actual student. So here's what your progression may look like. In your first pre-stage of your progression, your instructor will deploy your canopy as you are exiting the plane. So he will hold your pilot chute and as you'll be exiting the plane, he will deploy your main canopy. And the goal of that pre-stage is to have a good body position and exit stable. Your next pre-level stage will be similar. This is sometimes called the paper pool because you'll have a false handle in your canopy while your instructor will still hold your pilot chute. So this way, as you're exiting the plane, your instructor will deploy your canopy, but you'll get to practice a full deployment by pulling and throwing out the false pilot chute handle. So the goal of that pre-stage is to successfully practice and complete a full deployment procedure while remaining stable and have a good body position. For the two pre-stage levels, even though I did talk about the instructor-assisted deployment as the way to deploy the student's canopy, some drop zone may actually use the static line method in which the students are attached to the plane by a line and this line is the one deploying the main canopy of the students as they are exiting the plane. Then next at the stage L1, you will start your free fall progression. And since we are in the gradual free fall program, this will be done gradually. So at first you'll exit the plane and experience about three seconds of free fall and you'll get to pull your own pilot chute. So at that point, you're really starting to do the jumps by yourself. Your instructor will remain in the plane and supervise your whole exit and deployment. On a side note, keep in mind that all of those stages also include a canopy progression. So once you are under canopy, you'll have an instructor to assist you to learn about how to approach the landing pattern, how to perform a good landing pattern and assist you for your landing. If you want more insights about what is done during that canopy progression and the skills developed, you can watch the previous video we made about the PFF program, which includes more details about the canopy progression and you can watch it by clicking right here. So you just completed your stage L1 and from this point on, your free fall time will increase 
from stages to stages. The next stage, the stage L2, will give you five seconds of free fall and you still have to exit stable and pull your own pilot chute. In the stage L3, you'll have even more time to actually exit the plane, take time to stabilize your position, then reach out for your handle and pull. At this stage, you will experience about 10 seconds of free fall. Next, in the stage L4, this is when you will experience terminal velocity with a free fall of about 15 seconds. So here again, you need to exit the plane stable, stabilize in your descent, then reach out and deploy your main canopy by 3,500 feet. So this is when the altitude awareness becomes important because you're not just deploying just after exiting the plane. You are deploying, then experiencing some seconds of free fall, then you need to pull at the right altitude. At this stage, L5, you'll need to do other jumps and start to do some maneuvers while you are in free fall because now you're getting even more free fall time during the jump before needing to pull your canopy. So you will do some maneuvers like 90 degrees turn in the sky while always keeping your altitude awareness. And once you reach the right altitude, you'll have to wave off and then deploy your canopy. Finally, at the stage L6, you'll get to experience up to 30 seconds of free fall time where you'll need to practice some more maneuvers like 360 degrees each side and start to really fly in the sky. Again, keep in mind that all of those stages have specific goals, but each stages may require more than one jumps. But in the end, you will have developed the skills needed to become a solo skydiver. And also we remember that all of those stages and jumps also have the canopy progression portion that is pretty much similar to the other program we talked about, the Progressive Freefall Program or PFF. Moreover, if you are wondering who's giving you the approbation to go from stages to stages, well, it's of course your certified instructor, but also yourself. As you will go through the steps, you got to be comfortable to go to the next step before going for it. Voila! Once your course is done, you then need to do a solo certification exam, which is a theoretical exam. But once you pass it, you're now a certified solo skydiver. And of course, that's not the end, that's just the beginning. So with your solo certificate, you can start to work towards your A, B, C and D certificate of proficiency. So the next step is to explore what you need to do to get those and also what privileges do they give you. That will be explained in the next video. So make sure to subscribe to the CSPA channel not to miss anything. If you are interested to become a skydiver, make sure to check down the description. We have a list of the drop zones that are near you where you can take your skydiver course. And on that, I'll see you in the next video. The Canadian Sport Parachuting Association partnered with Skydive Vibes with the goal of demystifying the sport of skydiving and to share awareness of our sport. The goal of producing those videos is not to detail the exact progression of becoming a skydiver, but rather share some of the content and steps that you may go through as you advance. The exact progression may vary across the country and at different skydiving centers.